नमस्ते हमेशा खुश रहो विद्या दिस इज जेवीन डॉक्टर लिली त्रिवेदी एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट अ लेक्चर ऑन द टॉपिक नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज द एसोसिएटेड प्रॉब्लम्स एनर्जी एंड लैंड रिसोर्सेज एंड हाउ एंड कंजर्वेशन ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज नाउ टू स्टार्ट विथ let's discuss first the energy resources so among the natural resources energy resources are most common they are used as a index for the development of a nation now the growing needs requires energy energy is required for agriculture industry mining transportation lighting cooling heating in buildings etc the fossil fuel like coal coal oil and natural gas are presently supplying 95% of the commercial energy our lifestyle is changing from simple to luxurious and therefore we require the electronic gadgets private cars and scooters for us and they consume a lot of energy now this energy has been renewable and non renewable now the renewable sources are as discussed before also there wood solar wind energy hydro power biomass geothermal hydrogen energy that means they can be used again and again in an endless manner the non renewable energy is which have accumulated in nature over a long span of time and cannot be replenished when exhausted examples are coal petroleum natural gas and the nuclear fuels like uranium and thorium now if we take the energy renewable energy sources one by one the first is solar energy it comes from the sun and provides the energy of 1.4 kilojoules per second per meter square and we have been traditionally using solar energy for our day to day activities like drying clothes preserving eatables obtaining salts etc but recently solar heat collectors have been used solar cells are being used then we also have the solar pump which is run by the solar cells now we have solar cookers now what are solar cookers they are made to use solar heat by reflecting the solar radiations using a mirror directly on a glass sheet now this glass sheet is covers the black insulated box in which raw food is kept so the food is cooked is more nutritious as compared to on gas because there is slow heating we also use solar water heaters solar furnaces solar power plants Now, solar power plant is at Gurgaon produces 50 kilowatt of energy, which in turn produces electricity. After solar energy, we have the wind energy. Now, wind energy is very has been used, and wind energy can be harnessed in the wind farm, where wind mills are installed. The wind speed. required is 50 km per hour the wind potential of our country is estimated to be 20000 megawatt and the largest wind farm of our country is in kanyakumari in tamil nadu producing 380 megawatt after that we also have the hydro power energy the hydro power energy is estimated to be 4 into 10 to the power of 11 kilowatt per hour now what happens here the flow of the water turns the blade of the turbine in the which is located at the bottom of the dam which in turn rotates the generator and produces electricity after this we have another energy that is tidal energy the high tide and the low tide of the ocean the the difference is of several meters in height and this tide can turn and spin the turbine the these turbines are located in the reservoir of barrage which turns with the coming of high tide and 
going of low tide. The flow of water in and out rotates the generators and which in turn produce energy. So this is the basic of tidal energy. We also have other energies like ocean, ocean energy, geothermal energy and biomass energy. Now what is biomass energy? Biomass energy is the energy which is produced by the bioorganisms like plants or animals, residue, the cattle dung, manure, sewage and agriculture waste. The energy plantation crops, they are fast growing like Eucina, grasses, sugarcane, sweet sorghum. Now they are producing energy and they are by burning or by directly converting into burnable gas by fermentation. We also have petrochem crops. Now the plants like euphorbia are rich in hydrocarbons and they produce oil like substance under high temperature and pressure. Now this can be used to in the form of gasoline. We also have agriculture and urban waste biomass. Now this is also used to produce energy by burning. Now another example is biogas. Now biogas is a very trend thing. It is a mixture of methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide. The main constant is methane. It is produced by anaerobic degradation of animal waste in the presence of water. Now it is non-polluting, clean and low cost fuel. In rural areas it is a big success and is used for the purpose of producing biogas. There are two types of biogas plants, the floating gas holder and the fixed dome type. Now we also have the biofuel. Now biofuels are the biomass which is fermented to alcohol and like ethanol and methanol which is used for fuel. Now ethanol is produced from sugarcane, gasohol is produced and methanol is produced. Now they are used for the energy production. Hydrogen is also used for energy production. It is Hydrogen burns in air and combines with oxygen to form water. Now the thermal disassociation of water or electrolysis of water produces hydrogen. The photolysis of water also is in the green plants also produces hydrogen. Now we have presently these are the renewable sources. Now the non-renewable sources, we have the coal, which is formed in 255 to 330 million years ago. The hot and the damp climate produces the, produces the coal after being buried in the soil for many millions of years. Three types of coal is produced, anthracite which is the hard coal, bituminous which is a soft coal and lignite which is the brown coal. Now at the present rate the coal is being used, it will last only for another 65 years. The coal when burned produces carbon dioxide and when in the absence of air it produces carbon monoxide. After coal, we have the non renewable sources, petroleum. Now petroleum, we also have liquefied petroleum gas, that is the LPG used in our cylinders. Now the, the foul smell in the LPG is due to the ethyl mercaptan. It is added to LPG so that any leakage from the cylinder can be detected. Oil fields in India are located in Dibugoi, Assam, Gujarat, Bombay High Shores. Natural gas is the gas which is present in the fossil fuels and it is 95% methane. 
the gas fields are present in Tipura, Jaisalmer, and the Krishna Godavari Delta. From this natural gas, CNG, compressed nat natural gas, is used, and synthetic natural gas or SNG is used. Now we have the nuclear energy. Now nuclear energy is a, also a high destructive power and it is used for nuclear weapons also. But we harness it for providing commercial energy. The nuclear fusion and fusion two processes are there to produce the nuclear energy. Nuclear energy has a tremendous potential, but any leakage from the reactor can cause devastating nuclear pollution. The nuclear power plants in India are present in Tarapur, Maharashtra, Rana Pratap Sagar in Kota and Kalkapalam, Tamil Nadu, Narora in UP. So these are the energy sources. Now let's discuss some land source. The land is a valuable and finite source. On it we depend now, when this land gets degraded due to soil degradation, we are having a loss. Now, soil erosion is the first way how land is degraded. So, we disturb the natural balance and as such, by overgrazing, deforestation, mining, as such, soil erosion takes place. Climatic agents also produce soil erosion like torrential rains, water runoff, waves, melting of snow. Now these cause different types of erosion. Wind ero erosion is another factor of soil erosion. Biotic agents like excessive grazing, mining, deforestation are also responsible for soil erosion. We follow, we should follow soil conservation practices. Now they include the contour farming, the conservation till farming, terraces, strip cropping, LA cropping, planting of windbreaks or shelter belts to prevent soil erosion. Another problem in land resources is water logging. Now water logging is due to heavy irrigation of the canals, the water evaporates in summer and the salts are logged in the soil and they therefore prevent the soil from utilizing the air present in the soil. So these waterlogged soils affect the crop growth and as the soil particles are fully drenched with water and the pore spaces are devoid of air. These in turn affect the plant growth. Landslides, besides soil origin, landslide, desertification, deforestation, overgrazing, mining and quarry are the main agents of land degradation. Now what can we do for the conservation of natural resources as an individual? As an individual, we can, through different methods, we can conserve. We can conserve water, like we should close the tap while brushing, shaving, or washing. We should, in the washing machine, we should only fill the required amount of water. We should use in water saving toilets. We should check for the water leaks in pipes and repair the toilets because even a small pinhole size leak leads to 640 liters of water wastage in one month. We can use the re reuse the soapy water from our clothes for washing the courtyards, driveyards, etc. And the water of the plant should be done in the evening so the evaporation is minimum. Drip irrigation, sprinkle irrigation, improve the irrigation efficiency. Rainwater harvesting should be used in the house and so that each and individual can conserve water. For conservation of energy, lights, fans, other appliances should be turned off. Natural heat 
in the form of sun should be used solar cooker can be used the house should be built in such a way that the sunlight provides warmth and lighting to the house in summers we require cooling for this deciduous trees and climbers can be placed outside the house to cut off the intense heat of summers big trees is estimated to have a cooling effect equivalent to five air conditioner we can use joint carpools to go to places and public transports instead of using heat convectors we should wear adequate woolens we should recycle and reuse metal paper and glass and we should start walking instead of going for using vehicle for soil protection we can construct a house but keep the plants there for and we should grow ornamental plants herbs trees so that the soil will be binded we should use the compost from the kitchen for kitchen gardening we should use sprinkler irrigation use green manure and mixed cropping to promote sustainable agriculture we should not waste food we should reduce the use of pesticide we should fertilize the crops with organic fertilizer eat local and seasonal vegetables because this saves the energy of transport storage and preservation we should control the pest by biological and cultivational use so a lifestyle change can plays an important role in the conservation of energy and this is more applicable for the rich countries as compared to the poor countries so this digital session was powered by digital version 2.0 Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University hope you are satisfied with the digital session and if you have any query please mention in the comment box i will resolve it soon thank you very much namaste